We're now going to take a look at the logic behind the symbols used in data flow diagrams. So as mentioned before with data flow diagrams, we have four symbols used in this case. We have an external entity, which obviously is a person, is a product or another information system that either enters data into the system or retrieves data from the information system. We have a process, which obviously is a step within the information system that transforms the data. Now, in the case of data flow diagrams, we have multiple processes. Unlike context diagrams, we only have one process representing the whole information system. In data flow diagrams, they are broken down into multiple, multiple processes that are transforming the data at different stages. The third actual symbol is the flow line and as with context diagrams, the flow line is showing the movement of data within the system, except in this case as well, after the data enters a specific process, we're hoping that the data is transformed after that process and that will be reflected in the flow lines and the movement of data between processes. The final symbol and the symbol that is not used in a context diagram but is used in a data flow diagram is the data store and is basically a storage location where data is either sent to or retrieved from or both in most cases okay, within the information system, usually representing a database. So let's have a look at the logic of these symbols okay, and we'll use them with their specific names. So in this case, we'll start off with our external entities. okay. And once again, we can have multiple external entities, but in this scenario, we're just going to show that there's one external entity. This external entity will enter data into the information system okay, and then it will go through process one. okay. And we're trying to illustrate here that there's more than one process in the case of a data flow diagram. Process 1 will then transform the data and send it to process 2. Process 2 will transform the data and send it to process 3. Process 3 then may actually enter the data into a data store, such as a database, or it may retrieve data from a data store. Okay. Once this has been done then, process 3 may send the data back to the external entity as information, Okay, which is essentially what the external entity wanted to see all along. So I hope this actual diagram gives you understanding of the logic of the symbols used within a data flow diagram. Our external entities essentially are entering data into the system or retrieving data from the information system. We have multiple processes transforming data within the system and the use of data stores okay, for the actual storage of information. Our flow lines illustrating all over the place the movement of data and the transformation data within the information system.